Intellectual Disability and Scientific Research from Diagnosis to Treatment. Clinical Research from Molecule to Medicine. Thousands of molecules are studied in a therapeutic objective. All of them will not pass the different tests. Only one will become a drug. Here is its story. First, we need to identify the molecules of interest. It starts with the understanding of the disease, its clinical and biological signs, and also the mechanisms by which a drug could reset normal function of the organism. With this knowledge, the researcher thinks of some molecules that could be active. Once synthesized, these molecules go to the preclinical phase. After performing different tests at the laboratory and before turning to human beings, it is necessary to test the molecules on animals. These tests bring useful knowledge for the future drug, especially about its toxicity. We are trying to find what is called the non-toxic maximum dose. It is not possible to test directly on human beings. At the end of the preclinical studies, the researcher has an idea of the dose he can use on humans. All studies performed on humans must be authorized and be done with the patient's agreement. After full information, voluntary participants will sign an informed consent form. It is the participant who decides if he wishes to participate or not. A first phase, called phase 1, is then performed in a small number of healthy volunteers. It is the first administration on humans. We are checking if the drug is safe to use. We are also interested on how the drug acts on the body. It is called pharmacokinetics. Phase 1 always starts with one patient alone, who receives only one dose of the drug. Then we look at the safety, and if everything is fine, we can give the drug to another patient, and so on. Then in different doses. Experts decide if it's okay. If there is a safety issue, everything can be stopped. Then phase 2 can start. In the second phase, we are trying to determine the optimal dose of the drug. The one that seems the most efficacious with the least side effects. We are trying to establish a relationship between the dose and the effect of the drug. Several doses are tested and compared. At the end of this phase, we have defined the dose that will eventually be used. In phase 3, we test the dose determined in the previous phase. Phase 3 is the phase where we want to test the efficacy of the drug. We often speak about randomized, double-blind, controlled trial versus placebo. To demonstrate the efficacy of a new treatment or therapy, we must compare and show that patients who take the treatment or therapy are doing better than those who don't take it. We talk about a controlled trial. We use a placebo, a product which does not contain any active principle. The placebo must look exactly like the study treatment. We must not be able to differentiate the placebo from the active drug. To demonstrate the efficacy of the drug, our two groups of patients, study drug versus placebo, must be comparable. To get comparable groups, we randomize, which means that we assign by chance one patient to one of the groups. Randomization equally distributes patients with specific characteristics in each group. Groups are thus comparable. To be sure that the patients receiving the placebo or the study drug are followed up equally during the trial, we use double blinding. Neither the doctor nor the patient know if they are receiving the placebo or the studied drug. Randomization and double blinding are methods that avoid what we call biases, elements which can influence the measurement and the efficacy and lead to a wrong result. Finally, it is the marketing authorization. At the end of phase 3, if everything went well, a marketing authorization, MA, can be requested. Any time during the development of a medicine, everything can be stopped because of safety issues or the inefficiency of the drug. All molecules tested will not become a medicine. 
lots of molecules don't make it and fail. Results of preclinical and clinical studies decide of the success of a molecule. After marketing authorization, it is not finished for our medicine. It enters real life. Other studies can be conducted. They are called phase four studies. They allow a better understanding of the medicine in real life conditions. For instance, a better understanding of the safety of the medicine. Phase four clinical trials can be conducted to verify that under real life use and in bigger size population, the medicine does not have other side effects. For example, not yet seen during clinical trials. This is why sometimes medicine can be retrieved from the market after a certain time in use.